Thanks for joining us. This will be about a 10-minute interview with our chief pilot and director of operations, Jess Weaver, as we explore the qualifications and pathways to becoming a Fireboss pilot for Dallas Air. Jess, uh, could you talk about the pilot qualifications listed on our website? Okay, the pilot qualifications listed on the website uh, are designated to us by the Department of Interior. Uh, they require a minimum of uh, 1,500 hours time, which in that 1,500 hours, they want 100 hours of ag time, 200 hours of mountain, and 100 hours of single engine sea seaplane time. There's one qualification that is a must-have but is often overlooked, and it is the uh, low-level dispersing time. Uh, that qualification should probably state that the applicant must have, at a minimum, 100 hours of legitimate Part 137 agri agricultural operation time, more commonly referred to as crop dusting, aerial application, or ag time. And this is a must-have, correct? Right. The 100 hours is required. It, it has to be legitimate part 137 time. For example, it has to be ag flying, mosquito control, or other forms of uh, PIC aerial firefighting. Uh, and it's a, it's a must have. And it is the only one of the three of those qualifications that our company does not have the ability to help you get. So why do you think this ag time is required? Well, the ag time is required just for the the ability they the government would like to have pilots that are familiar with flying an aircraft low and slow, you know, close to the terrain without hurting themselves. So we've talked about uh, what the government minimum requirements are to fly a single engine air tanker, but what do you look for in a potential applicant to fly for Dauntless? Okay, the, the ideal candidate to work for Dauntless Air has at least 3,500 hours total time with several seasons, you know, in an air tractor, either flying ag or firefighting. This candidate should also have some other type of experience in their background. Um, example, you know, airline, corporate, military, you know, somebody who's well-rounded. You know, this additional experience will help them deal with, uh, you know, navigation, communications, and tactics that are involved in flying in a in a wildland fire environment. Beyond beyond the pilot experience, I'm also looking for uh, an in, an individual who is willing to, you know, work, work for extended times on the road, you know, um, being away from his family and friends and whatnot. This individual also has to be willing to, you know, work with others as, as part of a team. And ideally, uh, he's willing to become a professional wildland file firefighter who just happens to be in an airplane. You know, this is kind of two careers in one when you become very good at it. Yeah, aerial firefighting is such a unique and challenging job. Uh, Ag pilots typically have uh, strong stick and rudder skills, well, on the other hand, corporate, airline, or generally aviation pilots typically have strong navigation and communication skills, but lack strong stick and rudder uh, skills. What do ag pilots typically find challenging about transitioning into aerial firefighting? Well, yeah, if a if a if a guy has you know his his whole career has done nothing but ag and he's never flown more than thirty five miles from home and never never flown when the wind wasn't blowing and never worked off pavement, always working off grass. You know, he struggles in the, in the environment where he has to navigate, uh, fly in low visibility, um, the tactical environment of the complex communications, the, you know, dealing with the, the strong crosswinds when he comes back. That's why, that's why the other background besides just ag is so important. You know, we're looking for a well-rounded pilot who can bring all those skills that they learned other places into that ag plane, which is now fighting fire. Uh, what would you say new aerial firefighting pilots uh, struggle with the most? Well, that depends on which background they prim primarily come from. Um, you know, there's been people who have come to us that are experienced in the fire environment coming out of heavy tankers that struggle with the airplane. Um, I'd say that, you know, that's why the ag time is so important to us. Um, 
uh, others, it's, uh, you know, the other pilots have, you know, trouble once they get into the fire traffic area and the rapid tempo of all you know, of the operation and, you know, not understanding how it all works and, and what's going on. Um, so it just depends. <laughs> Can you talk about Dallas Air's uh, typical firefighting season? Season for Dauntless Air starts uh, usually sometime around the 1st of April and uh, tends to end around the middle of October. Uh, not all the pilots will work that long, uh, but in a busy season, you know, if you're assigned to an aircraft, that's what you could be expected to do. Generally speaking, uh, once you start the season, you work 12 days on and two days off throughout the entire season and usually don't go home, right? That's correct. Uh, you know, there may be breaks in the middle of it. We may have the opportunity for you to go home, but, uh, sometimes we don't. So you have to be prepared to be willing to do the whole season. New pilots often ask uh, where they're going to be based and if they'd be at that location for the entire season. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, uh, Dauntless has a wide variety of contracts, some exclusive uses that are attached to certain bases or areas some uh, call when needed that are moving around and following the fires. Um, typically, the guys that have been here the longest seem to uh, latch on to the exclusive use contracts so that, you know, they, they have a, a known routine. The uh, rest of the senior pilots pick, uh, you, know, C, you know, the CWN airplanes. Some of them like that lifestyle. The new guys typically end up in a relief uh situation where they are not the primary pilot in an airplane but they're crewing an aircraft while the pilot is on his required days off so they may work two days in one airplane travel the next day move to another one and and do this consistently throughout the season if a pilot meets all of the qualifications when should he or she contact you to apply for a job ideally contact me in the October, November timeframe, you know, or late or late summer for sure. When I'm starting to think about the next season, um, I don't mind being contacted if, if you're qualified at any time uh, to, but keep in mind that, you know, during the bulk of the season, I may get busy and, and, and forget you called. <laughs> so you have to have all of the ag time and meet the remaining minimum requirements then apply for a position at Dallas. Right. And keep in mind too, there's also a required school called NAFA, National Aerial Firefighting Academy, that normally happens in late January, early February, that is a requirement. If you want to fight fire in the US, you have to go to that. And you have to be nominated by a like, company to do, to uh, do that. Correct. What's your uh, favorite part of, of this uh, business as we close out? Um, being able to make a difference and, uh, and being able to work with some of the, you know, most awesome people on the planet. All right. Well, thanks for your time. And, uh, hopefully this answers a lot of questions that, uh, people have about how to get into the aerial firefighting business flying for Dauntless Air. Well, thanks. All right. Thank you. For more information, you can visit the dauntlessair.com website. And go to the menu icon in the upper right-hand corner. Click on that. Go down to careers. And there you'll find all the pilot qualifications. And you can also just explore the rest of the website to learn more about Dallas. Thanks.